Despite how exhaustingly tired the trope of comparing difficult games to Dark Souls is, one aspect that is undeniable about Hollow Knight is its approach to lore. Much of the lore is told through environmental storytelling, easily skippable NPC dialogue, and item descriptions, and thus can be very easy to miss. Our story begins long before the founding of Hollow Nest. An ancient civilization once existed where present-day Hallownest is located. Not much is known about this ancient civilization, but it is known that they worship the Void, a dark substance found at the deepest parts of the Abyss. Several other societies exist within the pre-Hallownest area. The Mosskin of Greenpath, the Mushroom Clan of the Fungal Waste, the Mantis Tribe Below, the Bees of the Hive, and the spiders and weavers of Deep Nest. Additionally, standing in opposition to the Void is the Radiance, a higher being, which are godlike beings with great power that are worshipped by lesser bugs. She is described as being of the brightest light and therefore the natural enemy of the Void. She is worshipped by her descendants, the Moth Tribe of the Resting Grounds. The Radiance has a great deal of power over the Dream Realm, a plane beyond the physical world which consists of dreams and memories. The dreams within can be spirits of those who have passed, or form based on the desires of the living. At some point in the past, the Dream Realm was once whole, but has since split into both the Dream and Nightmare Realms. The deepest power of the Nightmare Realm is the Nightmare's Heart, a higher being which can take on physical form through a vessel essentially possessing a host. The final higher being in pre Nest is Un, a giant slug-like being who has a powerful dream that formed the green path itself and is worshipped by the Mosskin. At some point, the ancient civilization that worshipped the Void disappeared, and it's never been confirmed why, but it's easy to theorize that it's something to do with the Void in the Abyss that they were so enamored with. The main inciting incident of the story occurs when a giant worm arrives near Hollow Nest. The worm is a creature beyond even other higher beings, and it originated from somewhere far away from Hollow Nest. The worm sheds off its shell, and a higher being emerges from an egg within. This higher being is the Pale King, who has come with for the sole purpose of making Hollow Nest his kingdom. The Pale King grants intelligence and sapience to the bugs of Hollow Nest, and they worship and revere him in return. He becomes a God King and rules alongside his queen, the White Lady. These two are pale beings, particular higher beings that stand out in their influence, even among the other higher beings. Other than her reign as queen, not a lot is given about the White Lady, so it's not clear if she arrived with the Pale King or was here for some time before. But it is known that she has an insatiable desire to propagate her species, so to speak. When the kingdom is formed, the Moth Tribe abandons their worship of the Radiance and choose to follow the Pale King instead, and the Mushroom Clan willingly accept his rule as well. However, the Bees of the Hive refuse the Pale King's rule and seal off the Hive, and the Spider Tribe also remains separate. The Mantis Tribe doesn't enter into the kingdom of Hollow Nest, and chooses to remain separate, but with a truce made that they will keep the beasts of Deep Nest from invading the kingdom. The Pale King ruled Hollow Nest from the White Palace, deep beneath the kingdom. He enlisted protectors of the kingdom, known as the Five Great Knights. The Five Great Knights were Ogrim, who said to be the loyalist of the knights, and the staunch defender of king and kingdom, Hegemol, who while a towering and imposing figure, was surprisingly soft-spoken and humorous, and Zemir, a mysterious outsider who traveled to Hollow Nest, Drya, a fierce but caring guard of the Queen, and Isma, who while kind and understanding is said to be the strongest of the knights. Under his rule, Hollow Nest prospered. He ordered construction of the Stagway, which connected the major areas starting at King's Pass, all the way to the capital at the City of Tears. The Stagway made trade and travel fast and convenient, and he didn't stop there. Under his rule, the tramways were constructed, one connecting the Forgotten Crossroads and the Resting Grounds, and the other from the Kingdom's Edge to the entrance of Deep Nest. 
However, the third tramway extending into Deep Nest was unsuccessful, as the denizens of Deep Nest that rejected the king did not take kindly to the intrusion on their territory, and the project was abandoned. During this time, mining operations were expanded in the Crystal Peak to obtain the apparently valuable pink crystals there. While the exact use of these crystals isn't clear, they seem to have been used as a source of energy per the Crystal Hearts item description. Beneath the capital, the royal waterways were also constructed, which is really just a fancy name for sewers. It became a breeding ground for the flukes and the fluke marm, horrible parasites that seemed to operate solely on instinct. For a time, it seemed the Pale King's rule was destined to last forever, with one tablet declaring Halonus the last and only civilization, the Eternal Kingdom. However, while the Moth tribe had stopped worshipping the Radiance, she had not disappeared. She attempted to make herself known once more by manifesting the dreams of the citizens of Halonest. When they resisted her, the infection began to spread, a blight which shattered the minds of those affected and returned them back to their base instincts. The solution that was arrived at by the scholars of the Soul Sanctum in the City of Tears was to harness the power of soul, draining hundreds or thousands of their life force in the process. The Pale King arrived at a different solution, and decided to seal the Radiance away in a pure vessel, a being with no mind and no will. Since the infection requires a host to have a mind that can be controlled, in theory, the Radiance would have no power over the pure vessel, and thus leave her trapped forever inside them. The Pale King had been experimenting with the Void for some time, and had filled suits of armor with Void, called King Molds, which were bound to his will. The vessel experiments took this idea to its furthest extreme. The potential vessels were the children of the Pale King and the White Lady. These children are born in the Abyss, and the Void fills them up in the form of shades, which inhabit the vessels. Hundreds of these vessels are thrown back into the Abyss for having a mind and will. The player character, also known as the Knight, is considered to be one of these failed vessels. Eventually, one vessel is considered pure, and chosen to seal the Radiance. The vessel was taken out of the Abyss and named the Hollow Knight. The Hollow Knight was then trained and raised in the White Palace by the Pale King. Three bugs were asked to become Dreamers, which would put them in an eternal sleep and seal the Temple of the Black Egg, where the Hollow Knight and the Radiance would be contained. The first Dreamer is Monomon the Teacher, a researcher in Hollow Nest. The second is Lurian the Watcher, who observed the City of Tears via his telescope in the Watcher's Spire. The third is Hera the Beast, the Queen of Deep Nest, who says she will only accept if the Pale King would give her a child. The King, um, obliges, and this child ended up being Hornet, born from Hera and the Pale King. When the Hollow Knight is fully grown, they have the Radiance sealed within them in the Temple of the Black Egg. The three dreamers are put to sleep to protect the Black Egg's entrance, which is then sealed. Two monuments were built in remembrance of their sacrifice, one dedicated to the Hollow Knight in the capital city, and one dedicated to the Dreamers in the resting ground. After some time, it became clear that the Hollow Knight was not actually a pure vessel, and had some measure of emotions within him. Perhaps they were tarnished by their bond with the Pale King who had raised them. Perhaps when they saw that the Knight also climbed out of the Abyss, they had a passing thought that maybe it didn't need to be them. Regardless, due to this, the Radiance was able to exert her influence again, causing the infection to reappear. As the kingdom fell to ruin, the Pale King abandoned the bugs of Hollow Nest and disappeared within the White Palace into the Dream World. Most of Hollow Nest's inhabitants became infected or died, with a few exceptions such as the Mantis tribe and some other bugs who were able to resist the infection. Instead of retreating with the Pale King, the White Lady locked herself away in the Queen's Gardens, feeling guilty about the hundreds of her children cast in the Abyss. As for the Pale King's Great Knights, Ogrim stays in the Royal Waterways to defend Isma's Grove, and says he hopes to meet the other knights again one day. Hegemol disappears, and his armor is stolen by a maggot, who then later appears as the False Knight, but it's unclear if he was killed. Demir stays in the Resting Grounds, where she mourns after her Mantis lover who died. 
Raya stands guard over the White Lady in the Queen's Gardens, but she is eventually overwhelmed by a numerous amount of infected mantises. Yzma dies within her grove and merges with the plants there, but the exact cause of death is unclear. Finally, as for the Pale King himself, he died in the throne room of the White Palace. His cause of death is never stated, but it's safe to say the most likely candidate was some sort of interaction with the Void, or perhaps, as being born to reign, he simply couldn't continue to exist as a king of nothing, ruling over no one. When the Pale King fled, he had the entrance to the Abyss sealed off, but somehow several vessels managed to escape, including the player character, the Knight. The Radiance eventually manages to break out of the Hollow Knight, cracking their shell and fully infecting them. This is the state of hollowness that the knight arrives in. After traversing through Dirtmouth, the knight meets Hornet, his half-sister, for the first time. Hornet tries to kill him, saying he is too weak for the task ahead. After defeating her for the first time, the knight travels to the City of Tears, where they meet once again. Hornet tells the knight to seek out the Graven Ash, being the shell of the worm the Pale King emerged from, where he can receive a mark. The knight then travels to the resting grounds, to the Monument to the Dreamers. After being trapped in the dream, the knight meets the seer, a remnant of the moth tribe, who gives them the dream nail, which can allow the knight to freely enter and exit dreams and access the thoughts of others. The knight travels to each of the three dreamers and uses the nail to kill them, which breaks the seal on the black egg. If the knight chooses to ignore Hornet's advice to obtain the mark and enters the temple without it, then the knight will find the Hollow Knight within and faces them alone. During the battle, the Hollow Knight stabs itself repeatedly, trying to kill itself. However, the Radiance takes direct control, basically making the Hollow Knight a marionette. The knight prevails and absorbs the infection from the Hollow Knight, before being sealed off in the temple to contain the Radiance for eternity. If the knight follows Hornet's words and travels to the Graven Ash, they will face Hornet one last time, to see if they are truly worthy. Once victorious, the knight enters the cast-off shell of the worm. Within the shell, the knight is marked by the king's brand and made the true ruler of Hellenest. With the brand, the knight enters the abyss, their place of birth, and Hornet tells the knight that they can try to defeat the radiance within the hollow knight and stop the infection at its source by using the power of the void that created the vessels. To do this, the knight first travels to the white lady their mother, in the Queen's Garden. The White Lady says she was anticipating the knight's arrival, and gives them one half of the King's soul, a charm supplying infinite soul. To get the other half, the knight enters the dream of a King's Mold, and traverses through the White Palace. After finding the other half by the body of the Pale King, and joining them together, they can then enter their birthplace, in the depths of the Abyss. There they find the egg they hatched from, and regain their memories of being cast into the abyss. This transforms the King Soul into the Void Heart Charm, and beings of the Void refer to them as the Lord of Shades. Charm in hand, the Knight enters the Black Egg Temple and faces the Hollow Knight. Midway through the battle, Hornet traps the Hollow Knight, and the Knight enters the Dream to fight the Radiance. As their battle rages, Shades appear, and then the knight unleashes the full power of the void to defeat her. In the physical world, Hornet awakens to see the knight's empty broken shell, and the shades disappear into the abyss. With this, the base game is over. There are two additional endings in Godmaster, which I can certainly cover if there is interest. But for now, thank you for watching, and it'd mean a lot if you could hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.